Hello friends, welcome to the webinar sponsored by Islamia College Autonomous One Body. My name is uh, B. Agbarana, Assistant Professor in English, Islamia College One Body. I am very happy to share few things on the topic the romantic age. Dear aspirants of net and set, before I enter into a topic, I would like to tell something to you. Indeed, literature is a vast area. It has many periods, many ages. It is very difficult to remember the dates and dates and all of this. But let us be very optimistic. You can win. See, the thing is, when you enter into a particular period and particular age, it is obligatory that you must know what is the central theme, what is the crux of that particular age. What are the dominant themes of that age? Who are the major writers? What is their masterpieces? And uh, that is uh, how they handle their work and what is the major theme of their works. And you have to arrange all those things in a chronological order. Then you can come to know that actually what is happening in that period. And likewise, you have to prepare. For each and every period, you know, what you have to do is you have to write the dominant theme and you have to write the major writers and their works and what made them to write like this. As you well aware that literature is a reflection of life. Literature is reflection of life. And uh, before that, as far as romantic age is concerned, the main uh, thing is, as you know very well that an individual is important than the nation. An individual or a common man or an ordinary man is the very strong unit of a society, of a state, of a country. An individual can bring loyal, laurel to the country. An individual can bring, uh, you know, black spot to the country. An individual is a very important entity. If an individual person is happy, the nation will be happy. If an individual man, if, an, if a common man is not happy, it means different. So, as far as the romantic age is concerned, romantic age, you know, uh, deals with individual people. It speaks about common man. It speaks about an ordinary man. How it differs from other periods, how it differs from other ages, I would like to give some highlights of the romantic age. First point is daring individual and imaginative approach to both literature and life and the second point is very important point the individual rather than society was at the 
सेंटर ऑफ रोमांटिक मिशन इंडिविजुअल गिवस मच इंपॉर्टेंस रादर देन सोसाइटी दट इज दिजन सेंटर ऑफ रोमांटिक मिशन दिस इज द मेन एरिया द डिट्रिक and the next thing is they that is the writers vehemently criticized all forms of tyranny exploitation of industrialism and polluted environments the writers the writers never write in any favors they wrote what they observe they criticize very seriously the all forms of tyranny and the exploitation of industrialism exploitation of industrialism means that is in those days you know laborers were exploited they were not properly paid they were not you know uh, that is um, uh, Uh, even the uh, two squares of uh, that is uh, that is meal uh, was not given to them they were not paid properly they were exploited they were treated you know they were treated human beings like animals and the very strict rules hard and fast rules so people got fed up with it but the romantic writers without any fear or favor they have criticized all the rulers in the works and uh, another one point is they give importance nature and human being as you well aware that william wordsworth was a very famous writer of romantic age he strongly believes in nature and you know one of his uh, quotes he says nature is my teacher nature is my teacher all the romantic age poets are also called as nature poets they are also called as nature poets because they give more importance to nature and you know one thing that nature always teaches us when you observe nature two things are happening the one thing is you can relax yourself and the second thing is that you can uh, you can learn many mysterious things and at the end uh, you may easily realize your creator when you observe the creation keenly with concentration you may come to know that creator when you reach as creator you know everything will be all right so what they do they do they give much importance to nature and human being that is the main you know theme of romantic age see for example there is one quotation i would like to give you these are all the highlights of romantic age yes we call it a very uh, very nice quotation crossed at midnight should be 
seen as yamadin the eternal language whereby god teaches and molds the human spirit very simple thing because people were fed up with their day to day life but these writers these poets drag their attention towards nature see how beautifully he says that now you can uh, come to know that uh, how they love the nature frost at midnight should be same sorry should be seen as embodying the eternal language whereby god teaches how god teaches man god teaches man through nature god teaches man through nature and which molds the human spirit which molds the human spirit that is this is the total reformation that brings discipline that brings you know that is uh, devotedness in life this is the quotation by sc comics and uh, the another one thing is that they try to abolish the discrimination in the society once discrimination enters the entire society society get collapsed upper caste lower caste black white there is racism all those things were prevalent but these writers but these writers you know they try to abolish they try to abolish the caste system they try to abolish the that is the upper lower caste all those things were abolished by their writers and not only that even this romantic age influenced american writers like edgar allan poe and uh, cooker and many writers was uh, were influenced by the romantic age whereas in a contradictory if you look at the age of reason if you look at the age of reason then only you can come to know the beauty of romantic age in the age of reason you know people were conditioned people were conditioned that is uh, you may you may come across dogmatism and orthodoxy in their life even people were not uh, that is allowed to take bath as they wish if you go through aldous huxley's poems in one of his uh, sorry in aldous huxley's essays in one of his essays comfort you may come to know the various very peculiar things that was prevalent in the society even people were not allowed to take bath they were allowed to take bath once in a, uh, that is uh, once in a three months whereas the royals and kings and nobles they can uh, they can take bath once in a week see all type of that is you know what uh, what it is called that is uh, superstitious things were prevalent people were conditioned people were fed up but uh, you know they were not able to raise question against the rulers and their administration so william wetherell also criticize the rulers of england like this he says in 1820 even in his poem london william wetherell criticized a london society like this a fen of stagnant waters this is how he criticized the london society a fen of 
stagnant waters that has lost manners, virtue, freedom, power. This is by Waxwell. And remember you some of the, that is the quotations. That is also frequently asked in the examination. And uh, for the same rulers, Shelley calls leeches. Shelley called the rulers as leeches who sucks the blood of poor people. So these are all the some of the things just to keep in mind. And now we will uh, discuss the generation of romantic poets. That is two generation of romantic poets. First generation seventeen eighty six to eighteen not five and the second generation eighteen ten to eighteen twenty four. We can broadly classify the generation of uh, that is romantic types into two first generation poets and second generation poets. First generation poets 1786 to 1805. Under this, who came? Who came? William Black. William Watts. Robert Burns. William Wordsworth, ESP College, and under the second generation poets, many eminent poets, Byron, Shelley, Keats. These are all the eminent writers of the Romantic Age. These uh, seven major poets who had brought a dramatic change in the language and uh, literature. William Black and Robert Burns were clearly forerunners of the Romantic movement. William Black, though he was a, a very original mind of the Romantic age, though he was an old man, but he had attracted the attention of all young readers. He had his own admirers. And you know, that is Black's vision. These are all the writers, you know, that first generation poems, William Black, Robert Burns, William Wordsworth, S.P. Coleridge, all the renowned, you know, poem, poets. You might, be, you might be known very well. Byron, Shelley, Keats. Okay. Now let us uh, deal with some of the writers. William Black. William Black concept of contraries. He adopts the concept of contraries. Concept of contraries. That is, it means experiencing experiencing opposites. Can you remember some of the poems? What is the meaning of experiencing opposites such as pain and joy, success and failure, prudence and excess, for what? To understand life. To understand life. See, for example, you know, that is uh, 
you can um, you can come across all those elements in his works very famous works songs of innocence and uh, songs of experience songs of innocence and songs of songs of experience for example you know for the uh, for songs of innocence the poem land the land and the songs of experience you know the tiger in songs of uh, that is uh, that is the songs of innocence william black brilliantly portrayed the innocence he symbolically representing lamb and how that poem begins little lamb who made thee do you know who made thee see how william black begins see you can uh, feel the innocence in these lines it is a critical enquiry how he is instigating the critical enquiry by which he is uh, drawing the critical appreciation the very two lines the beginning of the lines you can come to know the beauty of uh, the poem the lamb and in the tiger how he begins tiger tiger burning bright in the forest of the night when you read that lines that image comes in front of your mind you can experience it you can experience it and you can imagine it you can explain it out of your experience you can elaborate it but whereas if you say that it is the intellectual inquiry here takes place a little lamb little, who made the do you know who made the he is asking who, who is your creator who is your creator that is intellectual search takes place here intellectual search takes place here you know that is our out of our experience we can imagine what william black comes to know and uh, uh, one of his uh, poems that is auguries of innocence in william black is a very beautiful poem it is a very lengthy poem and uh, in uh, uh, that is i have no time to read all those lines but in that poem you know that is one line it's very very catchy it is very very attracting that is uh, in this poem mainly he deals with the uh, that is cruel deeds of uh, human beings it is uh, it, it is it, it deals with the uh, the faults and foibles of the society how people are cruel to each other even how people are cruel to that is uh, birds that is one line you know i'd like to tell you robin rest red breast in a cage put all the heavens in a rage even you know see the how william black how he loves nature robin red breast in a cage put all the heavens in rage it means that see the quest of liberty quest of freedom even you know he he, he is not able to tolerate the uh, the, the tolerate uh, the that is the confinement of uh, red breast robin red breast a bird if you put it in a cage it is undergoing a lot of uh, torment and torture a man should not be like this no one's freedom is hampered so these uh, type of lines you can come across see how he is dragging the attention of readers and uh, likewise you know so many things in william black poem you know uh, in william black poem and that is in a william wadsworth in william wadsworth uh, poetry you know uh, that is even you know he is giving voice to women he is giving voice to women he is giving voice to voiceless in one of his beautiful poems the solitary reaper how he attracts the attention of reader to a uh, that is uh, towards a uh, women how he begins that poem william wadsworth behold her single in the field yon solitary highland lass behold her see the the tone of that line the rhythm of that line behold her single in the field because women were oppressed and suppressed 
they were not treated like uh, human beings they were treated like dolls they were treated like objects and here william wordsworth gives voice to women folk he said that behold her wait stop you are always busy in there that is how that is how household chores you are always coming and going but you are not uh, looking at it you are not looking at the issues of uh, women who are undergoing various troubles who are uh, who, who are who, who are eagerly who are eagerly waiting for their presence see how beautifully begins the lines behold her single in the field yon solitary hide and lass reaping and singing by herself she is reaping and singing by herself what a beauty what a pain that line has reaping and singing by herself she is re reaping and she is singing by herself she doesn't bother about others because she may be known that no one is uh, uh, that is listening to her no one is ready to ask her no one is ready to support her so what she does she she is doing her work she is singing on her own because just to forget her pain what she what she is what what she does she is reaping to forget the, the physical pain what she does she is singing so here william wordsworth says stop here or gently pass consider her and what type of uh, voice she has and wh what would be the reach of her voice breaking the silence of the seas breaking the silence of the seas one day she will come out one day she will come out one day she will register her presence one day her voice goes beyond the limit breaking the silence of the seas how relevant the line is today it is you may talk about it likewise the second generation poets for example keats and byron there is one poem by keats ode on a gracian urn ode on a gracian urn it is an urn but how keats depicts the entire society culture and art through that urn and some of the lines from his uh, the, from that poem hard melodies are sweet but those unheard are sweeter you can come to know the depth of the meaning in this poem and at the end of this stanza what is says beauty is truth truth beauty so the urn describe the relationship between art and life all those things are there and uh, you know even in uh, shelley's prometheus unbound you may come to know uh, that is uh, he 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 was utterly you know uh, that is uh, criticize the exploitation uh, made by the clutches of tyranny uh, church state and commerce as organized and conducted in his time led to superstition selfishness and uh, corruption he says that in his work prometheus unbound reforming the world from clutches of uh, tyranny he believes that church state and commerce as organized and conducted in his time led to superstition selfishness and corruption so these are all the highlights of uh, that is a romantic age just i would like to uh, that is tell you if you take down it would be better some of the master pieces of romantic poets and usually you know some one uh, more than one or two questions may be asked from this area also uh, that is master piece of romantic poet william black william black's songs of innocence and of experience which was published in 1789 william black songs of innocence and of experience published in 1789 and robert burns his masterpiece is poems comma chiefly in the scottish dialect this is the lengthy title which was published in 1786 and uh, william wordsworth 
masterpiece is the prelude which was published in 1798 and st coleridge for his credit has uh, four works the rhyme of ancient marina which was published in 1798 kubla khan 1816-1816 Christopher also in the same year 1816-1816 and Lord Byron's masterpiece is Don Juan 1821 and Shelley's masterpiece is Prometheus Unbound 1821 and John Keats masterpiece is the eve of saint agnes lamia isabella which were published in 1819 dear friends i hope you have enjoyed this session best of luck thank you